Hey team, I hope you've had a awesome week. Last week I put down 100 litres of Teddy Sad's fast fermenting vodka and it's all finished. It's ready to strip, so that's what we're doing this week. We're also going to have a quick chat about why you do a stripping run, when to do a stripping run, and obviously how to do a stripping run. Welcome to Stiller everyone, this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if you're new here, have a look around, I make all sorts of videos about distillation. If that's something you're into, something you're interested in, maybe you want to get into distillation, or maybe you just really like craft spirits, have a look around, this might just be the channel for you. If it is, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Alright guys, so first up, if you didn't see the video last week of me making the FFV, you probably want to check that out, I'll stick a card up above for you. Just to fill you in from where that video left off, this fermented out in about 4 days. That is sitting at 0.994 and 13 and a half degrees. So after temperature calibration, that gives us... Uh, 0.993 according to Beersmith. There's a few things that I probably could have done to make that fermentation go a little bit quicker than it did. Teddy got in touch with me and gave a few tips. I'll share those with you. I'm thinking maybe I'll make an SFBV out of it. I don't know, but I'll get back to you. In any case, four days is pretty good. I've had the heat turned off now for about 40 hours and it has got down to, last night was pretty cold, it got down to about eight degrees. So it has done a decent job of flocculating all that yeast out of suspension, but I'm not too sure how much of it is clean. Teddy and a lot of the other guys that use this recipe often do suggest that you let this flocculate out to be pretty clear before sticking it in your still, just to give you that nice neutral vodka. So I think what I'm gonna do is rack this over into my fermenter and see how far down in here it is clean. And if it's looking good, I'll run the first stripping run today. And the reason for that is my wife's birthday is coming up in a day or two. Happy birthday, babe. So I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time between now and when I wanna get this video out. So if I can squeeze this stripping run in today, sweet. If I've gotta let it settle out for a little bit longer, that's cool too and I'll just have to roll with it. Let's have a look and see how we go. Okay, so that is not crystal clear by any means, but I'm impatient and I really want to get on to doing this so I think I'm going to do the first stripping run today and I'm guessing as it gets further down here it's going to get murkier. So what I'm going to do is put the first part that I rack off this into the boil kettle and strip that today and then I'm going to take the rest of this, pop it into the fermenter and I've got a spare keg and I'll whack those into the fridge and let those cold crash for the next few days while I'm away and then I'll be able to run them when I get back. That's the plan. So I know this isn't ideal guys and I know that it should probably be a fair bit clearer than that to run the FFV at optimal range but like I said I'm impatient and I just want to get on with it. So I'm going to do one stripping run now and to be honest it will be kind of interesting to compare this to the one I do when I get back and see if I can notice the yeast in it. That's the idea. Alright guys so a little over 40 litres out of the fermenter and it started getting a little bit murkier and thicker. So I've cut it off there which is cool. I was hoping to get 45 litres in here for the first stripping run anyway. Those elements are well and truly covered now so I'm going to get this turned on and get it up to temperature while I'm just getting everything else sorted. Then we can get stuck into the stripping run. So my original gravity was 1065. From 1065 down to 0.993 gives me an ABV of 9.5% which is pretty good. I'm ha totally happy with that and I'm really interested to see what yield I get in the stripping run and of course in the spirit run after that as well. So that boiler is still heating up right now and seeing as it is totally full and it started at 10 degrees I'm guessing we got a fair bit of time to kill. In fact I should probably time it. It's going to be really useful going forward to know exactly how long it takes to heat that up so I'm going to start taking notes. I think this is the first run where for me that's quite important. While we're chilling waiting for that to heat up, I figure it's probably a really good time to have a talk about what a stripping run is, how you do it, and why you do it. 
I guess the easiest way to look at a stripping one, the way that I kind of imagine it right now, is basically you're running a pot still and you're running it hard and fast. You're not stressed about getting a really high ABV or being really precise. You just want to run it through quick to save time. The outcome of this is that you get to keep a, a really high percentage of the stuff you want to keep in your final run. The alcohol and most of the congeners you like. But you get to leave behind a whole lot of stuff that you don't want in your final product in a down and dirty quick method right now. Going forward what that means is that you're going to have a cleaner end product because it's going to be twice distilled. Obviously sometimes that isn't going to be exactly what you want. You may want a whole lot of flavor carryover. I guess something maybe like a brandy. But when you're making vodka we want something super clean so that's exactly what we want. The other bonus is that it is going to save you a whole lot of time. Essentially what it lets you do is run the still super quick to get rid of a whole lot of volume allowing you to charge the still for your spirit run with the product of your stripping runs. And that over the course of multiple runs is really going to save you time. So just for really quick simple math and I'm just going to totally pull numbers out of my ass but imagine you've got 150 liters of wash and you can fit about 50 liters into your still. That means you can do three stripping runs running really really quick for each of those and then you're probably going to be able to fit the runnings for all of those stripping runs into one spirit run. So essentially you're going to be able to run your still four times and get three stills worth of double distilled product. That sounds like a pretty good deal right? That's why I've decided to strip the product through in pot still mode and then once that is all done I'm going to run a CCVM run with all of those runnings from all of the strips to end up with a double distilled vodka. In terms of actually running the stripping run it really is very simple. Basically you're going to run a pot still run with the highest power output that you have that your condenser is capable of knocking down. So for me my condenser is totally capable of knocking down the full 4k that I can put into the kettle. That's what I'm going to run the whole run at. It's not necessary to take any cuts and it's arguably not even necessary to throw away the four shots because you're going to do all of that in your final spirit run. For me this time around I'm going to take a little bit of four shots out of both stripping runs and dump those just to be extra cautious seeing as I am a total noob. Anyway, enough gas bagging, it turns out that my still fully charged with 4 kilowatts and insulated with the wool blankets takes pretty much exactly one hour to heat up. I did ditch 100 mils of 4 shots as well, but I will be taking 4 shots off for the spirit run too. Running in this fashion seemed to be giving me around about a litre every 10 minutes, so I think it was specifically more like 90 mils every minute. It has been coming off the still at around about 60%, I've taken about 3 litres at this point in time. Uh, I can also say that without a doubt I feel like I can perceive a difference in smell between the FFV and the tomato wash that I did for the cleaning run. Obviously this is just a memory and perception thing here so I could be totally biased, it could be in my mind that this is better, but I prefer the smell to this. If this was a tomato wash I did for the cleaning run, obviously I'm not going to taste this, but the smell, it's changed a little bit from what I remember. When I remember this coming off the still it smelled a lot like uh, fresh but not entirely ripe Granny Smith, Smith apples. Now it's got more of a, it's halfway between Granny Smith, um, maybe peach or nectarine, something like that, and like really thin, unsalted, uncooked, uh, raw, uh, not entirely ripe, uh, crappy tomatoes. It's got that, not in a horrible way, I know that sounds really bad, but it doesn't smell that bad. Uh, this on the other hand, this on the other hand is smelling really, really clean, there's not a lot to it. I do get a slight... Um, brand flavor from it. It's a little bit like, I guess a little bit like Wheat Bix if you guys are in New Zealand or Australia or um, you know like the shredded wheat package things with fruit on the inside, the breakfast cereal, maybe a little bit like that. But it would be really really interesting to do a blind triangle test between the two once I have a 
some proper tomato wash to do so. Uh, one of the guys in the comments, sorry dude, I forget your name right now, I'll stick it up on screen, uh, said that that would be a really good idea. I totally agree. I'm going to plan on doing that in the future. So obviously I have been collecting in the 500ml jars, there's no real reason to do that with a stripping run, I'm going to dump it all in together anyway, I'm not going to make cuts, uh, I just wanted to get used to doing it because that's going to be the way I do things for most other runs. Alright team, so that is the first, that's pretty much exactly 10 litres off the still now, we'll just see what that is sitting at roughly. Okay, so that is reading, that's saying 40%, it's a little bit colder than 20 degrees Celsius, so, I don't know, maybe like 41, 42%, uh, and that's the first 10 litres. I am going to put the lid on, clamp it down, and um, store that away. Alright team, I just shut everything down, and for my first stripping run, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with it. Everything went relatively well. I've taken off another 4 litres at about 13%. I went down super low. I had something to do out here in the shed anyway, so I figured I may as well run it while I was here, and while I was watching it. But just for the new guys out there, just know that that is not totally normal. It gets to a point of really bad diminishing returns. You're standing around waiting for ages to get very little alcohol off the still. And if that's only coming off at 8%, you're gonna be there a long time to get much of anything. It's totally up to you. You can do what you want. It's your booze, it's your still. Make it the way you want to do. Normally people will say sort of somewhere between 10 and 20% is what makes sense for them. It's up to you though. How much time do you wanna spend and how precious are you about getting everything you can out of there? Anyway, so what I need to do now is transfer all of this liquor over into containers that are suitable for storage. I'm using stainless steel pots. They're not totally sealable, which is a little bit of a problem for me, but I'm going to be doing the spirit run real soon, so I'm not that worried about it. I need to get some better glassware. Just out of interest, I also took a bunch of samples all the way through the run. I have... Eight samples, pretty much evenly spaced out throughout the course of the run, starting off way at the beginning at about 60%, down all the way through, down to about 20%. So I'm keen to get out of here and go and have a smell and a taste of all of those and see how this run changed over time. I also need to make sure to label everything well. Obviously at this point in time, it's the only stuff that I'm going to have sitting on the shelf. So not such a big deal, but I'm thinking that it's a really good idea to get into the habit now because when I've got a whole shelf full of all sorts of stuff, I need to know exactly what is what. Alright team, thanks for hanging out, thanks for all the effort that everyone's put into helping me get to this stage and into getting the channel to where it is, I really really appreciate it. So if you like the video guys, please hit that like button down below for me, it really helps me out. If you really liked it and you're not subscribed already, have a think about hitting the subscribe button too. And I'll catch you guys next week when I'm hopefully, all things going well, going to be doing a real spirit run. Can't wait for that. See you later guys.